Hi guys. So <laughs> I think um, this Cancer Moon that we're having right now has finally hit me. Um, my moon is naturally in Cancer, so that makes me a super sensitive, as you can tell, or you could probably kind of tell. I got a little emotional earlier. <laughs> um, where the emotions kind of come out, and as a Cancer, you know, we're all about Cancer moons. We're all about, you know, feeling everything. We absorb it, we feel it, we touch base with it all the time. Everything we everything we do revolves around our emotions and the way we feel and filter things. I'm going to try and get through this video without crying <laughs> because um, I want to be able to kind of really discuss what's on my mind. Um, so some turn of events have been happening in my private life, in my personal life. <sighs> That, um, you know, if you follow me on Instagram, you might see some of it pop up. But um, I don't want to get into that on my video. What I wanted to do was talk about a topic that really came to light while I was text messaging with my husband, who is like my best friend and my other half and everything. And so I'm going to share with you guys just something that I have been really thinking. And I had really, I had an epiphany moment where I was like, and it was like, it was like a self acceptance thing. So earlier today, I was watching um, Kellyanne Maddox's um, second video for her self love September, and it was you know talking about like being a part or associating with people who aren't loving themselves and who aren't in the whole. Um, maybe they're still doing things or taking place in um, in in whatever habits or ways of speech or beliefs or just the way that they live um that doesn't maybe doesn't align with self-love and, and and they're more harmful or toxic in that way so anyways i was watching her video and it really spoke to me um because i was that had everything like my whole family dynamic written all over it um, as you guys know, my backstory, you know, I come from a very conservative family and these people, um, have, a, they, they, they express love, they show love in their own way, but their form of love and the way that they love others is not the way I choose to show love for myself and to other people, um, and that pretty much brings me to this like whole feeling that I had, this whole realization that I had before I got all emotional <laughs> was I told my husband, I feel like I will never be good enough for them. I will never gain their approval. And all of my life as a young girl growing up to a teenager, to a young adult, and now as a woman, I have always always try to seek out their approval. All I ever wanted as a little girl, as a teenager, was to have the approval of my parents, the approval of my family members, like extended family. I wanted everybody to just be proud of me and to look at me as one of them. I always wanted to be part of the pack, right? And that also brings me to the chapter that we just completed in the book club that I'm hosting for reading um, Women Who Run Wild with the Wolves. We just finished reading about the ugly duckling. That fucking story <laughs> really resonated with this. And I realized I am a version of that ugly duckling. I actually, and this has nothing to do with duckling, but I keep a little keychain <coughs> of a black sheep because I used to always joke when I was a teenager I would always joke and, and tell and call myself the black sheep I was always the black sheep of the family and back when I was a teenager I wasn't into tarot I wasn't into you know the occult I was I but I was still the black sheep I always felt like I just didn't fit in in this family dynamic and a lot of it had to do with my belief system was not the same it never aligned with them I was never fully in love with church like they are I was never fully sold on the whole um churchy stuff like I just didn't you know and I would always do things 
because I wanted them, I would, I would go along with stuff because I wanted their approval. I would go along with um, a belief system, even though maybe it didn't really attract my attention too much or it didn't make me want it, but I still would fake it. And that made me realize a good majority of my life, if not my entire adolescent teenage time to now has been fake. It has been half and half. And that's what this video is going to be mainly about is how I have lived two lives, not just when I started this whole spiritual awakening and doing what I do. I was living a double life even before that. And I realized it. I was living a double life when I was dating guys and being promiscuous and where I was going. I wasn't telling my family where I was going. I was taken off for the weekends and Back then they were a little bit more lenient. So I would take off for the weekend and be with my with my boyfriend at the time. And we would be partying. <laughs> he was in a band and we would, you know, be traveling up northern California for shows that he would book for the weekends, you know. So I was a wild child. Um, but it was a lifestyle that they had no idea I was doing. Um and, you know, so I kept that a big secret. I kept my, my whole, like, sexual, um, I had a phase where I was very, just testing things out. <laughs> I didn't know, you know, I wanted, I, I was like, oh, you know, I, I felt an attraction to women at one point, you know, so... I went on a couple dates with women, and I went through that little phase that was, like, maybe towards the end of my senior year in high school. Um, and, you know, so that, that was that phase. And they had no idea. Absolutely no idea. My entire life. And when I say entire life, it's like as a child, it was different. But my entire life growing up, when I was finally able to really truly think for myself, I have always had a double life. I never had an, an alter ego, like a name. Until I started all of this stuff. Then Rose became who I was. Um, and that became my alter ego. I actually have a name for that person now. And I was texting my husband tonight. And I was telling him. There's, are, there's a lot of times more so than ever. That I wish I was Rose 100% of the time. And my other person. The other me. <laughs> I feel no connection to whatsoever. All of my shadow work, all of this healing stuff that I've been doing has been totally under the name of Rose. That is my alter ego. That is the name I gave myself when I started this spiritual awakening. Partly because of who I connected with when I had the awakening. Rose is a very prominent name. You know, it has a lot of meaning behind it. Personal meanings and whatnot. But it's more than that. It was also a way for me to, you know, be able to talk freely and do what I wanted to do and not have to use my real birth name because I feel no connection to that birth name. I feel like I have abandoned that person from so long ago because that person was always trying to seek approval by doing things that that person wasn't happy with doing, by doing things that I, that me, I, because it was me, it's me, <laughs> um, doing things that I wasn't interested in, but for the sake of keeping everybody happy in the family, right? One major example of that was attending church all throughout my teenage years, even though I was sitting there just waiting for it to be over. I had no connection whatsoever. Um... And that was a face I put on for the sake of, I was 14 at the time. I had to do what my parents told me. I didn't, I wasn't rebellious to their faces. I was always rebellious behind their backs. So uh, it was just, it's just hard. It was like, I feel like I had a disconnection to my birth me, the birth name from a very young age. And I, and I realize that now and I see it as like, it was, it started off as a crack and now it's literally like torn apart. And, and to me it's, I'm ready to mold it back together. 
I want that part, but I feel like I won't be able to do that until I'm 100% moved out of this space. And that time is coming soon. I feel it in my bones. I know it's coming soon because just like when you're not following your spiritual path and you feel so frustrated and you're emotional and you feel like you're hitting walls and everything that could go wrong is going wrong because you're not on the path that you're supposed to be on. That is how I feel about these last few months that are pending before my husband and I can start our journey. And the only reason why we are waiting till December is because he has a pending job thing. So we won't find out. We're probably, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we'll find out by October. But until then, we can't do anything, you know? Because if he is offered this position, he's going to be going away for months, a few months. And there's no point in house hunting when he's going to be gone. I'm not going to do that by myself. <laughs> So then that would be a standstill. And in that process, I've been going back and forth in my heart. If my husband is going to be gone for seven months for a training, can I hold myself together another seven months living here without him? And I'm, it's been on my heart so heavy because I really do think if he does take off, I, I don't know if I could hang it here. <laughs> I don't think I could do it. Um, and I am tempted to, you know, find myself a place for me and Luna, my cat, so we could finally be living on our own. We're not going to be in a house, obviously. We'll be in an apartment again, but that's, that's just something that I, I've been thinking about. So there's a lot of, like, unstable ground right now in my life, <laughs> and it's very hard to maneuver, um when you're so unstable. My root chakra is like broken constantly because of this. So this realization that I had seriously like blew my mind. It was like, I feel the call to merge Rose with my birth name, to become one, to become truly myself, 100%. And by doing that, it would mean really letting go of a lot of fears of people not accepting who I really am, people not accepting my choices, facing fears of people finding out what I do or finding out about my lifestyle or whatever, and having a voice rather than just falling in the background or simply doing things because I want people's approval. I want to just truly be me. And I feel that itch. <laughs> so I know it's coming. It's not time yet because I know there's still some other things we got to clear up before that. But I know that that's coming. And you guys will know what's happening because there will probably be a huge change in my name. Um, I haven't decided yet, you know, if I am going to go with the birth name or stick stick with Rose or mesh the two or whatever. I haven't decided all of that, but I know that that process is coming. I feel it, and I've been having those realizations, and today was like, oh, I had it, huge, um, and I had to get on here and talk. The only way, the only reason why I'm able to talk to you right now with like at 8.30 in the, in the evening at night is because my family is not home because there's been a family emergency. So, you know, they're they're doing their thing. That's the only reason why I'm filming right now. Um, and I had my own little moment, you know, and I was like, I need to just get on here and talk. I have found the outlet of being able to express things as, as, as much as I can because I do like to honor my privacy but being able to express what's going on in my heart or my mind, I feel like it's it's good for some of you because some of you do find that helpful to hear it because it either helps you discover that in yourself or I just find being transparent, as transparent as I choose to be, um, helps connect with the people I truly want to connect with. Um, and that means everything. So 
I had to get on here and share that because there was just so many things. And then the other thing, you guys, like, um, I think it was like two or three nights ago I was meditating. And of course, you know, when I meditate, sometimes I like to talk to my brother. And so I'll, you know, it's my way of praying, but I like to connect with my brother, you know, and I told him, you know, um, show me your around. Like, I haven't seen you. I haven't heard from you in a while. <laughs> and literally like all day today, I've had nothing but sevens, sevens everywhere. And that's my number for him. So it was nice to see that. Um, I feel like that also seeing the sevens also aligned with what's happening in the family emergency as well. So everything's kind of connected in that way. But yeah, you guys, I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk about the damage of, you know, when you grow up hiding a good piece of yourself. And so many of you can relate to this. Those of you who had to hide your sexual orientation, had to hide, you know, your belief systems, your, your interests. For me, it was like stupid stuff. When I was like younger, it was stupid stuff with just the kind of books I was reading. That's how close-minded and conservative my family is. Um, but it, but if you are in, into that, like if you grew up with that kind of, um, lifestyle, you'll understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> I have had the beauty. I think I had more friends who had such free lifestyles, um, than I did with friends who were like sheltered like I was. Um, and I also think that there's a reason for that too. The fact that a lot of my friend diamond friendship dynamics, um, showed to me, they showed me the beauty of having parents who didn't control your every move and your every belief and your every emotion. You know, you could cry and they're not going to tell you you're weak or you could have a belief in something that's different from them and they're not going to tell you you're wrong or that you're going to go to hell. You know what I mean? That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Um, I love my family, you know, and I feel like that it shows the fact that I'm so afraid to reveal who I really am and what I really like and, and this and that because I know I don't want to break that for them. I don't want to be a disappointment to them, but I know I will, you know. <clears throat> so it's hard. <laughs> it's really hard and it's exhausting. It is so exhausting to try to be someone you're not. It's it's so much easier to just embrace who you are than it is to hide. And I feel for every single one of you who has to hide because I know exactly what you're going through. I know exactly how you feel. Um, and I guess that's another reason why I feel like the need to openly talk about this because I know some of you who watch me and who, you know, follow me are living the same kind of way you know and so this may just kind of reveal to you that you're not alone um I think that's a big a big one for me is to show you guys that you're not alone um because I know it could be a very very lonely feeling when you feel like you are just the odd one in the family and you feel like no matter what you do and say you're just gonna always disappoint them because you just don't connect it's so hard for me to be in the in the group chats with my family because my sister is very, um, she's very connected with her faith, right? So she verbalizes it. And then she's, she's very, she's very fluid when she prays and it's beautiful, but I'm not like that. And it's very hard to fake that. And I try not to fake it. I just, I just choose not to answer sometimes like my text messages and well, I won't answer them. And I know that it's like, it's like my paranoia, my, my, <laughs> my paranoia is telling me they, they're noticing, they're noticing, you know? So sometimes I start freaking out thinking, oh my gosh, they're going to notice that I'm like distancing myself from them. And then they're going to start asking me what's wrong. And that's the worst. I don't want to be asked what's wrong because then I'll probably like start crying, you know? So <laughs> It's hard and I'm just, I, I'm just grateful that I have somewhere to come and vent it, you know. So I appreciate you guys for watching and being involved in my journey and, you know, all of your support and love. It does help. It truly does. Um, but I just wanted to get on here and share that message because I do feel it is damaging. It truly is damaging. And when I was a teenager... 
doing things behind my parents' back, I didn't think that 10, 15 years later that it was going to affect me so much. And it is. Now it is. It truly is. I'm in my 30s now. And it truly is affecting me. It's making me feel like I'm so disconnected to my birth identity. If that's even, oh, that even makes sense. I don't want to say my name. That's why. <coughs> but who I was at birth. The, the, the real me, right? <laughs> um, I don't feel connected to that, to that girl. That's just not me. When I think of who I truly am, I see Rose. I see the cackling moon. I see the life that I have been creating for myself. The path that I've been on. The amount of healing and realization and awakening and truly in touch with myself. My relationship with God is so different from how it was back in the day when I was attending church with an empty heart. Um, I feel, I feel connected now, but I'm connected in my own way. You know, it's the way I needed to find it and it wouldn't be the way they want, they want it, but that's too bad because I did it for me, you know? So <sighs> facing fears is hard, especially when it's like, when it revolves around people you love the most, but Kellyanne even said it. And she speaks so beautifully about it. But it, I can't remember what video it was. But she had said something about like um, people, even if they're your family, if they don't accept you for who you are, you have the right to distance yourself. You have the right to disassociate with those people. And as much as I feel like that will hurt me and break me, I also feel like it's necessary and it's funny because my coworker today, she she said something to me that really made me think. And it was like, yeah, you know what? You're right. <laughs> she said that my family is the type of family that you got to love from a distance. And I am so like blown away by that because it was like, you know what? You're right. And there is nothing wrong with that. That's the other thing I realized was there is nothing wrong with if I have to love you guys my you guys meaning my family from a distance if I cannot be a part of the things that you do because it doesn't align with me I have every right to say and and choose to step back I have every right to do that just as you have every right to believe what you want to believe and that's the thing it's like if they can talk to me how they have in the past about disappointments and things that I've done or said or whatever or my lack of this and that if they can talk to me in that way, why can't I stand up to them about the same stuff? Just flipped over, you know? I guess it's fear of like I grew up knowing or thinking <laughs> that my parents were always right. And that I had to always respect them. That's how I was raised. But now as I am much older and wiser... <laughs> I realized my parents are not always right. They are not. And parents in general are not always right. They are human beings. And human beings, we all make mistakes. So growing up with that mindset was hard to break. And I had that conversation with my husband this morning where I was telling him, you know what? I realize it now. My parents are not always right. And it's okay for me to think that way it's okay for me to not reach out to them for help every once in a while and that that actually brings me to the last point I wanted to make I was in a minor car accident last night and I didn't tell anyone because I didn't really want to I didn't want to have like flashbacks about it again <laughs> but I was in a car accident obviously I'm good so anyway but my first instinct was to call my dad it's so crazy because it's like, I've been married three years, but I still have those those instincts of like running to mom or running to dad, right? And that was one of the biggest things I had to break when I got married. I had to tell myself, my husband is mine. He is the one I go to. And I don't have to have approval from parents anymore. I don't have to have approval. I don't have to care of what they think. And that has been so hard for me to turn off. And I don't know. I mean, maybe some of you guys, it was easy for you guys to turn off. But for me, it was fucking hard. 
<laughs> I still struggle with it. Um, so anyways, last night I was in the accident and I reached out to my husband first. Didn't even tell my parents. My husband was on his way home from, he was on his way from work. He left work early to come see, to meet me at the crash site. Um, but my father-in-law showed up first because my father-in-law actually lived not too far away. And it was just so crazy to have my father-in-law there in replacement of what I normally would have had my father. And I made the decision not to tell my father and not to reach out because I don't have to, you know, and that was big for me. So little things like that. And, and some of you guys are going to watch this and probably laugh and just think like, how can you, how, why is that so hard for you to disconnect? But <laughs> keep in mind, please, <laughs> that the way I was raised is different. You know, maybe we were raised differently. And so it was easier for you to disconnect than it was for me. But I don't know. I there was just there's just so much going on in my head right now and the like I said <clears throat> the moon had me emotional earlier but then I was like, "You know what? Rather than just sitting around and crying about this, maybe I should film a video and talk about it because I have noticed that the times that I have filmed venting, I feel so much better after. Like it's such a release. So this is another one of those videos where I'm venting. Um, but thank you if you stayed with me this whole time. <laughs> but I just wanted to share with like what was on my heart, what was on my mind. And if any of you guys are living double lives or any of you guys are like feeling disconnected with your true self or your birth self versus like this new version of you that you created, um, I know I know what you're going through. So Anyways, with that, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to go upload this video, and um, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye, my loves.